Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. Dogs are surprisingly good at communicating with people, considering they can't speak. They use body language and vocalization to express their wants, needs, and fears. But sometimes it is hard to figure out what dog sounds actually mean. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is your host, Michelle Forto, and I am the lead trainer for Alaska Dog Works, where we help humans and their dogs have better relationships. So did you know that we have a team of sled dogs? There is nothing cooler than hearing them sing together under a full moon. Let's find out what your dog sounds actually mean. And if you stick around, you might learn a thing or two about the German Shepherd. Some dogs have a wider range of vocalizations than others. For instance, Rottweilers purr, Siberian Huskies talk, Shiva Inu scream, and Basinji's yodel instead of barking. For the most part, however, dogs use the following sounds to express a pretty wide array of meanings. Barking, whining, growling, howling, sighing, and groaning. So what do some of these sounds mean? Well, the bark. Dogs bark, some dog breeds bark more than others, and some dogs barks are deep and intimidating, while others have high-pitched yaps. Your dog's bark can indicate joy or fear, anger or awareness, frustration or need. The trick to interpreting a bark is context and experience. A dog that barks when you get home, wags her tail, and bounces around with her favorite toy is probably telling you she is happy to see you. A dog in your neighbor's yard that runs along the fence, snarling and barking when you get too close, however, is probably letting you know that this is her territory and you are not welcome. If your dog barks when someone knocks on the door, she is telling you that there is someone there. Her bark might be excited if she is the sort of a dog that loves people or downright angry if she has a stronger stranger danger instinct. You will get better at interpreting dog barking by observing when your dog barks, the different types of bark she has, and what else her body is doing. Your dog's bark pitch can also indicate emotion. A high-pitched bark is welcoming, whereas a lower-pitched bark indicates a threat. All right, let's talk about those dogs, though, that whine. The whine is almost as versatile as the bark, but less assertive. Dogs typically whine when they want something like food, a toy, or attention. A dog that whines at the door may want to go outside and a dog that whines while lying next to her leash could be hoping you will take her for a walk. Whining can also show anxiety or fear. 
A dog with separation anxiety may whine when left alone, and a dog with a fear of going to the veterinarian may whine in the lobby. Dogs also show pain through whining. Your dog does seem uncomfortable, is panting and whining, and his behavior or appetite has changed. He could be whining in pain. As with barking, the trick is figuring out the context surrounding the whine. Okay, you guys, we're going to talk about the growl. At first glance, the growl seems straightforward. Growls can mean stay back, stop touching me, or I will bite you if you come closer. Of course, in a play, a growl can also mean look how very dead I have made this rope toy or pull harder. We respect growls when we hear them. Growls are a warning and dogs that are punished too often for growling may decide to just skip to the next warning level, the bite. Growls and snarls are intentionally intimidating. Over time, you may learn your dog's growls as well as know his barks. A low rumble can mean he heard something outside. A solid growl may mean I would like you to stop touching me, but I won't bite you. And a snarl that shows all of his teeth might be his way of saying, I really don't like that dog or person and I may bite if given the opportunity. Please don't misinterpret that the snarl when they show all of their teeth is your dog smiling. They're actually giving a very clear warning. The howl. Wolves how to communicate with their packs and possibly to express a wider range of emotions than we currently understand. Dogs howl for similar reasons. Dogs that howl when their owners leave them behind could be trying to communicate with their people. And howling among dogs seems to be contagious, just like it is for wolves. You are sure to know that if you're a dog musher when your 36 sled dogs all howl in unison. Many dogs never howl. Some breeds, such as Siberian Huskies, however, howl regularly and even use their howl to talk, making strange and often amusing noises as they express joy, curiosity, frustration, and sometimes emotions that seem totally alien to us. The sigh and the groan. I like to also add into this the eye roll because there are dogs that do that as well. Dogs sigh and groan to show contentment and disappointment. Puppies moan and groan when they are settling down for a nap and adults may sigh as they relax in your lap or on their dog beds. If your dog pesters you to play or go for a walk, however, and then flops down on the ground and lets out a long sigh or groan, she could be disappointed that she has not gotten what she wants. It is tempting to compare human sounds and dog sounds, which can be confusing. For instance, dogs typically yawn when they are nervous, not tired. But when it comes to the sigh, we seem to be on the same wavelength. Think about the last time you settled onto a particularly comfortable couch. Did you sigh in contentment? Or what about a moment when things didn't go your way? Did you let out a sigh or groan of disappointment or exasperation? We can learn the meaning of dog sounds by observing our canine companions to see what seems to trigger these sounds. If your dog has behavioral problems associated with sounds, it may be a good idea to consult your veterinarian or a trained animal behaviorist to figure out the underlying issue and how to correct it. We're going to take a short break here, and when we come back, we're going to learn what was the German Shepherd bred to do. We're living in uncertain times. If there is one thing we can be thankful for, That is the recent pet adoption boom. Shelters are being cleared out, and that means you may not know much about your new best friend. Alaska Dog Works virtual and on-site classes are the best way for you to build a lasting bond and learn about your pup, new or old. From setting up a proper routine to learning the commands and much more, Alaska Dog Works provides you with the resources to develop your dog into one of the best. Right now, Alaska Dog Works has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. 
Go to alaskadogworks.com now and use promo code DOGWORKS and save 20% off your training program at the time of your booking. Visit alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS to save 20% today. That's alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS at the time of booking. By now, the lean, chiseled body of Ren Tin Tin is engraved in most people's minds. A faithful companion, best friend, and super sleuth alongside his partners, Ren Tin Tin brought the emblematic German Shepherd dog into our lives and living rooms throughout the years, gaining popularity for his intelligent dog breed that waned only when anything related to Germany was taboo following World War I and II. The German Shepherd dog has gone through many changes throughout the more than 100 years it has been in existence, most notably the recent trend towards straight-back shepherds, which begs the question, what was the German Shepherd dog bred for those many decades ago? In 1889, a medium-sized yellow and black dog caught the eye of Captain Max von Stefanitz. Due to this particular dog's herding tendencies, intelligence, and especially its ability to take direction quickly and efficiently with minimal to no training, von Stefanitz found beauty and attractiveness within the German Shepherd dog to be a secondary trait as opposed to all the working and mental traits which he deemed most important. Hoping to create a perfect working dog, von Stefanitz valued mental stability, intelligence, and temperament above aesthetics. The German Shepherd dog was bred extremely specifically with regard to the exact function of every element of the dog, from gait to attitude. During World War I, the German army made use of the breed as a war dog. American soldiers brought many of these dogs back with them from Germany, reinvigorating the breed in the United States. While the German Shepherd dog was considered a great police and war dog, loyal, somber, and fast, the rise of Rin Tin Tin in TV shows and movies brought about the theme of a boy and his dog for many Americans, a motif that has followed dogs in the movies and in real life, as any dog owner can attest. Following the war, many German shepherds were beginning to be trained as seeing eye dogs for blinded veterans in the United States and Europe, furthering the German shepherd dog's utility as a breed. However, once World War II began, the German shepherd dog had to go back to work for both the Allied and the Axis forces alike who employed them as mine detectors and guard dogs. Prior to World War II, there was a more distinct separation between the American and German lines of German Shepherd dogs. However, due to the war, many German lines died. As the two bloodlines were crossed, the resulting dogs displayed the lines and signature looks of the modern-day German Shepherd dog. The dog slowly developed into a more distinct and beautiful breed with many specific virtues, such as intelligence, versatility, and self-confidence. Over the years, the German Shepherd dog has performed with the military and police doing bomb and drug detection, canine partner work, and messenger work. In addition to police and military work, the intelligence and calmness of the German Shepherd dog has allowed the breed to be trained as seeing eye dogs, medical assistance dogs, and therapy dogs. Stefanitz wanted to create a breed that would be utilitarian and intelligent while also being fiercely loyal, all traits that are well known to anyone lucky enough to own these amazing dogs. We have trained a lot of German Shepherds in our time as trainers at Alaska Dog Works. In fact, our pro trainer, Nicole, owns one right now named Watson, 
bred by our friends at Rocky Mountain German Shepherds in Colorado. Do you like what you're hearing on our podcast? Please be sure to let us know on our social channels. Just search DogWorks Radio. For more training tips and tricks, check out alaskadogworks.com. And thank you for joining us today. Did you know that the single best thing you can do is tell your family and friends about our show? Ask them to listen to this episode and maybe they will become one of our rabid fans too. I'm Michelle Forto for Alaska Dog Works and Dog Works Radio. See you next time. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media.